Hey everybody, welcome back to Cisco Live Mia. My name is Jeff Bull, Manager of Developer Advocacy. Hi, my name is Oksana Sanikova. I'm Security Programmability Lead on Global Security Architecture Team. Awesome. Oksana, it's so cool to have you here. And it's really exciting to be, this is my first time overseas, but really excited to be back at Cisco Live in Europe, in Amsterdam. It's an awesome, awesome city. Um, you know, when I got here and I was walking through and seeing how everything is set up, uh, talking to some folks who run the Network Operations Center for Cisco Live, and walking through the facility, there's a lot of focus on security for Cisco. We know that's a big deal. But here in the DevNet Dome, thinking of developer tools and methodologies, I, you know, this might be kind of rudimentary, but I really wanted to ask you and kind of start this off with, you know, thinking of developer tools and automation, why is automation such an important thing in security operations? Well, automation is really key to solve security operation problems right now because we all know about attacks that are becoming more and more sophisticated. And the main challenges that SOCs are dealing right now is lack of skilled resources and employee attrition as well as alert fatigue. Like There's plethora of alerts coming in every day and it's so hard to find the needle um, in the haystack and really identify what is important uh, for us and answer the question, do we care? Right, so to do all of that in dynamically and um, in the right time, we really need to use automation. So speaking of, in, in kind of speaking of it in that way, what are some of the activities? You know, because I when I think automation, as a network engineer for most of my career, I think of automation and like automating some day-to-day -day tasks to kind of get them out of the way. They don't really require a lot of thought. Um, they're just repetitive tasks. So on the security side, what would some of that look like that you would want to, to automate a way to like simplify or not just simplify, but also be able to audit and check later on. Yeah, so when talking with customers, we see four main um, huge use cases for using automation. The first one is gathering visibility into and context from multiple different tools before the analyst even looks at the case, right? So automatically gathering all of that information, consolidating it in one place, that's the first use case. And then the second use case is while you're investigating something, getting additional context, like enriching data from one tool with signals from another tool. So sharing those signals between different tools in the second one. The third big use case is responding to threats, like automatically blocking stuff, remediating, disabling users. And many people get afraid of it the first time, but then when you take a grasp of the first two use cases, you really start being like more adventurous, I would say, right? And you start, you can also use approval actions. It's not like you have to block something without looking at it, right? And then the last area that we see um, rising up is cyber hygiene operations. So automating cyber hygiene operations, um, applying risk-based analysis to in that area and managing vulnerabilities becomes very important too. Yeah, I can imagine. that through One of those use cases where you talked a bit about uh, sort of uh, assessment and uh, you know things like threat hunting and those sorts of activities, I've always thought of those as being much more hands-on and active things that have to happen. So I'm kind of curious, in you know in a SOC, what sort of activities, you know, if we could be specific for a moment, like what sort of activities within that sort of use case would pe would a, an operations person actually be doing that, or automating that they wouldn't like, I'm gonna take my hands off the keyboard and let a tool do this for me. What sort of situations might that look like? So interestingly enough, 63%, um, according to Sun's threat hunting survey, 63% of SOCs use uh, in-house built-in software for threat hunting. So really, the tools that are in the market, they not flexible enough mm, to okay. fit in specific uh, described operational procedures of that specific SOC. So they really have to develop their own tools, right? Um, and that's where APIs become really critical, right? So pooling data through the APIs versus browsing between different user interfacing, figuring out where it sits, searching, collecting the data, copy and pasting, creating giant Excel sheets, so all, all that kind of stuff you don't want to do every day, right? You want to do fun stuff. Um, you know, coming up with new hypotheses about different threat hunting, um, you know, um, vulnerabilities or threats that may come into your organization. So you want to do creative stuff and not that laborious 
boring stuff yeah. every day. You know what, I, I, so often that's, I think that's the story that is sort of missed or misunderstood by people when they think automation is uh, they think, well, I'm automating myself out of a job. And it's like, actually, no, you're, I think you're actually automating, automating yourself more into a job because like right. the, you just said it, you want to do the creative, fun, interesting things. That's what people are really good at. But doing the repetitive sort of like click ops thing where like, I'm just really good at typing commands. Like that doesn't actually make you that valuable. It's your ability to think around problems and solve. Yep. If you can automate the clicky clicky stuff that you do, then you don't have to do that anymore. And then it can be audited and checked, but then you get people to really be able to think about how is a, a, a bad actor trying to circumvent our processes and procedures and our frameworks to do something bad how do we kind of use psychology to get in their mind a little bit to do our job more effectively? That's really interesting. Um, so I'm, I'm curious, like, do you have any specific use cases maybe we could share for people watching, like a specific situation that might have happened where you know tools were used in some way to automate away certain problems so they could actually solve a bigger issue? Yes, so uh, just recently I did the DevNet Lightning talk um, about automating, uh, applying user policies, user zero trust policies. Uh, in this situation, we had an event about unusual geographical login for a user, mm -hmm. and we were able to investigate it, pull additional data about the user itself, and additional context about this event, the device that the user has been using automatically for this event, and within seconds being able to answer that, yes, that is really critical. We are looking at VP of finance, right? And uh, we are looking at device that has vulnerabilities that is not unhealthy because different policies are not applied the way they're supposed to be applied. And then we are able to right click and immediately disable that user in Active Directory so that user cannot access any of the cloud based applications and any critical resources in our organization until we fully remediate this threat. So that would be a specific example. That's really cool. Yeah, it's it's so often these seemingly not innocuous, but the daily things that happen that, that I don't think get enough attention. But mm -hmm. it seems like those are the ones you really do want to automate because you really want to simplify as much of the data gathering as you can into a casebook or things, something like that, mm -hmm. so that a person can then make a decision mm -hmm. rather than trying to abstract all of the, the things away. Yeah, and the tool we are using at Cisco is uh, SecureX, the SecureX orchestration component, which is a general purpose um, orchestration tool that can work with any APIs, including third party and Cisco tools as well. And it uses drag and drop interface, but it also has a, a Python adapter. So if you are a proficient coder, you can, um, you can use code in that tool, but if you're not, you, I mean, you don't, you should not be afraid of the automation and think that it's only for developers. It's really not anymore. Uh, it, that's something I really did want to ask you about or dive into further. I'm glad you brought that up. Is you know how valuable, in your opinion, how valuable are are the are developer skills? And when we say developer, you know, it doesn't necessarily mean just a software developer who just went to school to be a computer scientist and that's you know they just write code every day. But those tools and methodologies and the understanding of how to use them. How important is that becoming now with platforms like Secure Expert, any others, for um, people who work in SOCs or just do security work in general? How, how important is that becoming? I think it's extremely important because really without automation, you won't be able to overcome those challenges. And to be able to automate between the tools, if you don't want to wait for a feature to be developed for you, by um, the engineering in like two, three years from now, right, and you need it right away, you can pretty much create it by using the APIs and some simple scripting, right? So having understanding of some programmability basics and REST API basics is really critical for security specialists. I, I'm, so, I'm so glad that you brought, you kind of reinforced it that way. Something that I think we've all noticed in DevNet as we talk to security folks and other technologies as well is that Having the ability to work with APIs or work with an SDK, it doesn't it doesn't mean that a platform that, d that doesn't have enough features. It means that that product can it, whatever products may, make sense for you to use can be can deliver the right sorts of features in a GUI for the audience that that's what they want and that's all they need, and then leave the rest of it available through an API to say then whatever you need to do, you can use the power of the platform right. to go implement it in the way that is right for you. That doesn't have to be a graphical interface or whatever else. So it, it, it sounds like that's becoming even more important yeah. these days. So talking to customers pretty much every day about their SOC use cases, mm -hmm. 
I have not yet seen as a two customers with the same use case, with exactly the same use case. Everyone is doing things a little bit differently, yeah. and that's where you would use APIs and you would use um, ask, um, automation to make that like really fit your your needs. That makes a lot of sense. Well, this has been fantastic. Thank you so much. And before we wrap up, I wanted to ask, are there any other available resources and things that you wanted to share with the audience so they know how to kind of pick up and really get into this themselves or learn more? Yeah, I always encourage everyone to go to Security DevNet Dev Center. This is the one-stop shop for everything that we have, and we have a lot of collateral. Um, all API documentation sits over there, learning labs, uh, sandbox information, and, and uh, code samples. We have a lot of code samples that you can leverage off the shelf and customize it for your needs. Uh, and we have a YouTube channel. We have a DevNet security automation YouTube channel with a lot of demos that um, you can also get access from Security Dev Center. So that's the place to go. Excellent, thank you so much, Oxana. It's been great having you here. And for everybody, go to developer.cisco.com slash Cisco Live for everything related to the event. Thank you.